Hello everyone and welcome to this video. I'm going to talk about seven tips on how to photograph the northern lights or the aurora borealis if you are up in the north in the Lofoten Islands or in Iceland. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have anything else to add just use the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel at the end of this video of course. Tip number one is to use an app in order for you to know the KPA index. The KPA index is uh, starting from 0 to 9, it has these values between 0 and 9 and it tells you the disturbance in Earth's magnetic field caused by the solar wind. Now it sounds very scientific, uh, the idea is that you need a KPA above 4 in order to have a greater chance for you to see the northern lights or on the entire sky. So um, this is simple, uh, as simple as it gets, you get the app, the app will send you alerts based on your location. I'm using the Aurora uh, app, uh, there are all sorts of apps out there, it's up to you what app you choose. Every app will show you the KPA index and then will send you alerts based on your location if you have chances to see the northern light. So tip number one is to use an app for that. Tip number two, be in the best location at the best moment. And that is up in the north, as I told you, the Lofoten Islands or Iceland, between October and March. And if possible, on a new moon. New moon means no moon on the sky visible. Many people uh, mistake this with full moon, no. Uh, in order for you to see the northern lights better, just have a new moon on the sky. Tip number three, have a composition in mind. Be ready. This is uh, what basically means. Uh, when I was in March uh, this year in the Lofoten Islands, the northern lights appeared and while I was driving towards the composition that I had in my mind, I saw a lot of photographers stopped by the side of the road photographing from those uh, positions. I mean, for me, this is this is just plain stupid. I'm, I, I get it that you are all bump up and you are all excited to see the Northern Lights, but if you have a photo that has no composition at all, if you have a photo that speaks about nothing, it's, it's worthless. It's pointless to be there and to photograph the Northern Lights. We even had some photographers be so annoyed that uh, the lights of the car uh, got in their shots. I mean, come on, just go in a place and choose a composition. The composition doesn't include a road. I mean, it's basic photography if you want. The same rules still apply when we are talking about composition. So be ready, have a composition in mind, have a place near you, near the location where you are, and whenever the northern lights or the aurora borealis start to appear, just go there and start uh, composing and start being creative. You don't need too many compositions, one, two, a maximum three, all in the 100 meters uh, distance from each other. Tip number four, you never know when this is going to happen. You never know the hour when the northern lights will be visible. So. I guess Aurora Borealis have a mind of its own. <laughs> it just appears when it needs to appear. So be 100% ready all the time. This means that you have to be careful. You need to uh, kind of sleep and rest throughout the day. And then you go photograph the sunrise. You go photograph during the day. You photograph the sunset and you are ready for the northern lights. And next day you need to do this uh, all over again. So somewhere in during the day you need one hour sleep or two hours sleep maybe, depend on the person, but you need to rest in order for you to uh, be able to uh, do this day after day after day. It's very important, don't overlook it. Tip number five, we talk about settings. Now you may have different approach. I didn't want to have the uh, camera in bulb mode and just start the, the shutter and then just kind of wander around and stop it. And it's a difficult thing to do. The reason is because the northern lights have different light intensities um, from minute to minute. It varies. So I prefer to stay at ISO 800, um, f4 or f5.6 
and the exposure time from 20 to 25 seconds. And I noticed that this worked very well in capturing the scene and the northern lights. Now in my photo I also add um, a human interest and that was me. I went in the front of the camera, I used uh, light to shine the snow in front of me and that created the silhouette which is me of course and um, it, it adds some human um, interaction in the scene, it had some proportion, it had another counterpoint for the beautiful northern lights that were happening uh, just above. Tip number six, be aware that the northern lights will not have the same intensity uh, throughout the night or throughout that one or two hour when you see it. Uh, it will start really low, it will start just with a faint light but it will pick up, it will have a peak and then will go uh, down again. The important thing is to kind of anticipate for that peak. You, the moment you kind of start to see the light growing, be ready and try to compensate that with your exposure. That is when I went from 25 seconds to 20 seconds. Uh, it's true that it's it's almost impossible to know. I mean, I started the shot with the lights going like this and let's say it had a width like that. But after, let's say, 15 or 18 seconds, it went berserk. It went like this. On the, it covered the entire sky. So it's completely impossible for you to know when it's going to happen. But usually, usually when it's big on the sky and it's visible, usually the peak will follow very soon. And tip number seven, this is the last tip, it's about editing your Aurora Borealis photos. When you edit these photos, don't try to get all the details from the shadows. There are going to be areas really dark because the Aurora Borealis is really bright, you will have areas in your photos that are really dark. You can use the light to shine light if you have a really powerful light. Uh, you can use it to shine light on some elements. This is what I do. Um, this is what I did in the, the Lofoten Islands. But still, there are areas that are going to be really dark. If you want to have the northern lights more clear and to be more visible in your photo, just use a brush in Lightroom and use the clarity tool to boost up a little bit the the, the clarity and how the lights are perceived. Don't overuse the exposure, don't make the scene too brighter, but make sure that the scene is bright enough to be uh, pleasant to the eye. I'm saying this because when you're photographing in complete darkness, the scene on your back screen uh, of your camera seems very bright. It, it seems that it's okay, and that is because it's all dark around you. But the minute you are in front of a computer, then you can evaluate better the situation and you can adjust the image accordingly. So these were it. These were the seven tips that I had for you that you can apply to better photograph the Northern Lights slash Aurora Borealis. You can use them, you can add your own tips below. Don't forget to subscribe and until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better. Bye bye.